Hello, welcome to The Independent. I'm Tom Peck. I have here Dean Norris, star of many things. Lethal Weapon 2, Terminator <laughs> 2, Star Trek Troopers, <laughs> Under the Dome. It's currently making waves in the world of Florida nail salons <laughs> as a bisexual Catholic uh, mafia boss um, in Claws on TNT. And of course, Hank Schrader in the world's greatest ever TV show, Breaking Bad. Uh, Dean, yes. hello. Hey, how you doing? And you know, you know Hank better than anybody else. Yeah, I guess. Um, do you think he would have voted for Donald Trump? <laughs> um, boy, that's a that's a that's an interesting question. You know, he has a lot of support in the law enforcement uh, community, so maybe he would have. Uh, um, but I don't know if he would have supported him now. But uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, because he he. he I, I, he works in drug enforcement, yep. um, but he has a lot of Hispanic colleagues. Right. New Mexico voted for Clinton, didn't it? It but, did. But largely because of his large Hispanic community. Right, right. right. Yeah. But you don't know the answer? I, I don't know the answer. I, I, think, uh, I think a lot of people in America are, are a bit conflicted. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, he had a lot of, he has a lot of support uh, in, in the law enforcement community, various law enforcement communities. So I, I imagine that... Uh, it could be that Hank would have uh, been uh, would have talked about voting for him, but maybe in the in the in the uh, privacy of a ballot box uh, didn't. <laughs> well, see, I think it might be the other way around. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's the there's the the conventional narrative of the election is that when Trump said that the grabbing by the pussy stuff, that he would at that point have would have crossed yeah. Hank's moral line. But then at the same time, there's lots of people who imagine that that's when the election, that's when Trump must have been finished. But of course, he wasn't finished. So he didn't cross as many moral lines as, as many people's moral lines as right. perhaps was suspected. Yeah, well, but. he crossed a moral line when he said John McCain was in a war here because he got caught uh, in, in the war. But that was way early on. So, <laughs> so maybe. Uh, but I don't know. But also, you know, Hank was a, was a bravado kind of guy. You know, and I, I always thought, I always wanted to come to terms with that from a character point of view. And it's that... And I see it, and I and I hang out with a lot of law enforcement people, and just to, not personally like as a regular thing, but to kind of see who they're what they're like because I play them a lot. And you know, it's a tough business, and you got to be a tough guy. Now, maybe you know, and somewhere somewhere deep inside, there might be something that's uh, that uh, that's softer, but you never let that show. Because you would just, it's, you, couldn't, you couldn't survive. It's like a doctor all of a sudden caring too much about, you know, what he's doing. He's got to stay focused on, on uh, and they, I think that sometimes can leak into your personal life and you become a colder person because you have to deal with so much tragedy, you know. And I think uh, law enforcement types have that because you just can't see that much bad stuff every day <clears throat> and not be a little cold, you know. Mm. Otherwise you wouldn't survive. It's interesting you were saying about, you've, obviously you've played a lot of cops, and I know you've, I've seen you describe yourself as the alphabet actor before. Yeah. Yeah, CIA, right. Right. FBI, LAPD, and so yeah. on. Um, and, of course, cops are at the heart of this stuff that we are British people are seeing on their TV right now. And, of course, British people have a vision of the US police, largely from the sorts of characters that you yourself have played. This yeah. sort of big, nice guy, but you don't want to get on the wrong side of them. Um, gun in the badge, humble home, knows the difference between right and wrong, but doesn't necessarily know too much more than that. Mm. And now we see the president essentially declaring war on the NFL over a, over a protest that have um, police brutality at their heart. And for outsiders, especially like Brits, we start to question whether or not perhaps, you know, the cops, the bad guys. And I don't know how, I mean, how you, what you what you, how what you feel about that. Yeah, well, that's another one. I mean, I, uh, it, it's, it's, it's such a tough... You know, it's like the abortion issue, man. No one's going to, no one, you know, you just, it's so, there's so much tension on both sides of that that it's hard to ever get people, you know, to, to, get, to get through that. And you cannot deny the, the passion and the, and, and the legitimate complaints of the, of the Black Lives Matter movement, you know what I'm saying? But again, if I have to give some sort of, uh, you know, police perspective on it, and I'm clearly not a, a, a policeman, um, I'll tell you as an actor trying to become a uh, cop what you think about is that every single day you go to work thinking you might have to use your gun and that's got to affect you somehow psychologically <laughs> every single day you go to work thinking you know I might not come back and it's really easy 
and it always looks bad, you know, but it's easy to under to underestimate the fear of one's life you have if something goes bad, you know. Um, so to at least acknowledge that perspective, I think, is something that 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 is important. Um, but it's a tough it's a tough one to get around because then it looks, you know, obviously statistics and other things show that, you know, things don't always look so good for, for the Black Lives Matter movement, you know what I'm saying, in terms of, I get what they're protesting. I mean, you, you go to a lot of football games, don't you? you I, a few. You no, you go back to watch Notre Dame? I you? love Notre Dame. <laughs> Which, don't we start, I don't think your average Brit really gets, because of course you didn't go there, but it's, I your, didn't home go there, but it's it, your home it, team. Right, it's, uh, it's just, uh, it, I grew up in South Bend, which is where <laughs> yeah, Notre Dame is, yeah. so you, you can't grow up there without being a without uh, being a big fan. But what, I mean, what does what would someone if the camera was beamed on Hank Schrader in the crowd at an NFL uh, an NFL game? Yeah. Watching players taking a knee, yeah. some people booing, other people supporting them. I mean, what what's Hank Schrader going to be doing in that situation? He'd just punch the camera. I think. So <laughs> he, just, he wouldn't allow it. To. <laughs> he wasn't allowed to see it make a decision. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't think? He had a, I mean, would he have a view on it? I mean, well, I think everyone has a view. Not, the guy's not stupid by any stretch of the yeah. imagination. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, I, 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 I think he would echo the the veterans out there who say, "Look, we fought for the right of people to make um, these types of protests." You know, and obviously other. People think that's not the case, but um, I think he might uh, might be persuaded by that uh, by that argument. You know, we live in uncertain times. There could be a nuclear apocalypse at any moment. That's so right. I'm going to start by asking you the <laughs> one question that yeah. uh, has kept has puzzled me in my waking and sleeping hours yes. for several years, and it's this: Why did Hank have to die? We all have to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think it was the last straw. They tried to hold that for a long time, and uh, I think it was the last, uh, kind of the last final, you know, break f for Walter. And uh, he, he was, it was the one time Walter White showed, um, com you, know, was, you know, he, cr he cried, basically. It was the one time he really cared. I mean, he watched, you know, uh, Aaron Paul's girlfriend die and Jane and uh, in the show, and he did a lot of nasty things, but it was the one time I felt that he actually hurt inside. You know, watching Hank Hank die, even though I was the guy going after him, so maybe they were trying to offer some level of uh, of uh, something for Walter White. But uh, it, it was it was interesting because Vince told me two years prior that that's how it was going to happen, and uh, they kind of knew that. And he said, "Well, he almost gave me the exact line. He said, uh, you know, I can I can tell you what you're going to have to die about this about the second to the last episode and." Uh, and you'll die with your dignity. <laughs> <laughs> because you watch it, you think this is the guy who is the moral yeah. force. He never does anything wrong. Yeah. He's sort of straight down the line. And, and, in, and in this moral world that he's created, as you watch it, you do sort of think it's, the option is there for yeah. Hank to still be standing at the end and for Walter to still meet his denouement. And I, as I watched it, I thought may, may, maybe, maybe he's not going to die. Yeah, but, well, I think they wanted you to think that. And, you know, Hank, uh, to, his own, to his own detriment, uh, back in the third season, he admitted to all these things that he did, which I loved about him because his wife wanted him to lie, the, his superiors wanted him to lie about beating up Jesse uh, uh, Pinkman. Um, and he said, no, you know, I can't. I need a clean soul at some level. And he said, you know, this, the, the universe is... It was one of my favorite ever scenes in the third, uh, third episode where he says to his wife, you know, I, the universe is telling me something. I just... I'm not the man I thought I was. And I thought that was such a... It gives me chills now because to have that guy, any man, have to admit that he's not the man he thought he was, you know, particularly to his wife, and say the only way I can clean my soul is to go in and basically give up my job, tell the truth, and uh, and then and and then for a moment, uh, my boss in the show comes and says, "Hey, things are looking pretty good. It looks like he's not going to press charges." And there's like one inkling there where he's like, "Oh, honey, I think things will be okay." And then that all hell breaks loose. That's when the Mexican guys come to try mm. to kill me. <laughs> So that's that's Breaking Bad. That's Vince Gilligan for you. You know, I think he wants you to think you have a shot at some sort of moral ending, and then uh, and then the, the the truth of the world hits you. He's interesting. You say he told you two series before, two seasons, two yeah. seasons before that it was gonna that you were gonna be killed. I mean, yeah. Did you in the three seasons leading up to that point? Did you did you think that you might live? Do you were you pretty sure you'd 
Yeah, I was pretty sure because uh, I think he needed that tension, uh, you know, to kind of carry through to the final. Uh, I think if you lost Hank going after him, you would have missed a lot of the tension, you know. That was the only thing keeping him in. I mean, he was he was beating all his all his foes, if you will, right? He beat Gus Fring, he beat all, you know what I'm saying? And the only possible tension was that Hank would, would catch him. You know, and there was so many times he got close and all this kind of stuff. So I think he wanted to play that out as long as he could and kind of... To the, to the very end. Because so. a friend of mine asked Brian Cranston that same question yeah. in, a, in a toilet in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, this is a little bit of action, right? Yeah. And um, Brian Cranston said, he could, I'll just finish what I'm doing and I'll give you an answer. <laughs> and and what he, was the he came out and he said, um, he, said um, he said, Hank was a cancer. He couldn't contain what I did. And then he left. So I think he means that Hank had to die for Brian to, for, for, for Walter to reach his conclusion. But yeah, but, but that's sort of a, sort of a plot reason, not a moral reason. I right. Think. Yeah. Well, I don't think. The, I mean, I think Vince. You know, Vince. Is, I thought there was some possibility because Vince is a as a he's a very kind of right and wrong kind of guy. A just believes in some sense, but he's also I think he's a realist and understands that you know right doesn't always win out. Um, and he did let him die. I love the fact that he let him die with his with it, with his dignity in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he he almost gave me that line like you know you can go. My name's Hank Schrader. You can go f yourself. Um, I think he almost gave me that line like two years earlier. So he kind of knew right where it was going to go, you know. Um, so it was uh, interesting.